and I'm here with my co-host Jeff Frick. This is Silicon Angles The Cube, our continuous production of AWS Summit. We're here live at the Moscone Center. My colleague and, and everyday co-host John Furrier is down at Stanford today at the Axel Partners Big Data event. Uh, but we're here, we've been covering this wall to wall. Uh, big data is obviously a hot topic. Machine data is one of the fastest growing and most underutilized components of big data. And Jeff, Sanjay Sarathi is here. He's the CMO of Sumo Logic, a company that is in this field. Sanjay, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So, we're here at the uh, AWS Summit. This is just you know, unbelievable. The cloud is, uh, is screaming. There's an old saying that big data gives the cloud something to do, and <laughs> machine data, as I said, is really you know, growing super fast. So give us the update on, on Sumo Logic, where you guys are at, and uh, then we can get into the whole AWS angle. Sure, so Sumo Logic is a company that was founded in 2010, and the entire premise is that the growth of machine data is the fastest growing component of big data. And this machine data can come from every part of your infrastructure, from applications, from your network infrastructure, from wireless devices. And the big challenge is not just collecting and aggregating and managing that data, but actually generating insight from it. And that's part of what we do. So, how do you do that? So you've got all this data out there, it's all this noise, right? Mm -hmm. This exhaust, I like to say. Yep. How do you guys you know, make sense out of it and, and as we like to say, get signal from that noise? Sure, so a huge part of it is in our patent pending technology called Logridges, which uh, really solves one of the biggest problems around big data, which is what do you do about data that you know nothing about? And so what we, what we provide is a way to distill hundreds of thousands of log messages into a set of patterns. And those patterns are what provide that insight because you as somebody who's running that IT infrastructure actually knows what that message means. And so those patterns tell you where to focus and give you the ability to essentially find that needle in the haystack without having to comb through every single part of the haystack first. So you're using math, statistics, yeah, we have a lot of data machine scientists. Learning. Yep. Machine learning is a huge part of our infrastructure. So every time you send data to us, we learn about what that data actually means. And when you interact with that data by telling us what's important and what's not important, that machine learning essentially takes that into account. And so the next time you do a query or an analysis on top of that machine data, we're actually providing you with the results that make sense for you and for your particular situation. So, so give me an example. So I've got my data, I want to, what do I do? I load it up into the cloud and I, and I uh, access your service. Take us through sort of a Sure, a so you example. may have data in your data center, you could have data in the, cloud, in the AWS cloud, you could have data off a network somewhere in your own data center, and we'll essentially collect all that machine data, in the form, typically in the form of logs, and we'll then suck it into our cloud-based service, and then we'll index it, we'll parse it, will allow you to immediately start creating searches of it because all of that data is collected in real time. We don't tell you to come back in an hour and then start searching. You can start searching as soon as that data gets indexed. Instant gratification. Search. Instant gratification, <laughs> better than an ice cream. So, <laughs> what happens is... Yeah, because it grows, it doesn't exactly, just go away. <laughs> it doesn't just disappear. And so what happens is as soon as you start getting that insight, you can then start performing analyses on it. You can start doing correlations across different parts of your infrastructure. You can perform statistical analysis on it. Um, and then once you start doing that, you get a better handle of actually what's going on in your infrastructure. And so that gives you the ability to start baselining your infrastructure and saying, this is really what the infrastructure is supposed to do. And then when anomalies occur, you instinctively know what those anomalies mean because they're 10% above or 10% below that baseline that you've set for your infrastructure. So what are people doing with your, your product? Um, let me talk about some of the applications and use cases. Sure, so for example, Netflix is a client of ours and they use us to manage uh, their entire internal IT infrastructure. Uh, as one example, they collect logs from their virtualization infrastructure, which is VMware, and they troubleshoot it, monitor it, correlate it with other parts of what's going on in their infrastructure. We have a, a customer called Apogee, which is the API company. And they use us for a couple of different purposes. They use us for compliance purposes, so that, because they need a centralized way to collect, manage, and store all their logs for compliance purposes. And they use us as a single uh, system of record for them. They also use us 
to essentially monitor the errors as part of the application development process. Again, it's so the use cases range from application monitoring, they range from application management, operations management, to compliance and security. Okay, and then how do, how do you charge for your, is it a service, uh, is, it a, is it a product, a combination? Yeah, it's a service, it's okay. a cloud-based service, so we charge on a subscription basis, and it's based on really two factors, how much data you want us to ingest and analyze, and how long you want us to store the data. Okay, so you charge by the, the, the terabyte of ingestion? Yeah, by the gigabyte, by the terabyte of data. And we're very flexible, so it's not based on how much data you're ingesting on that behalf. We normalize it over the course of a month. So if you need to elastically scale to handle one day's worth of bursting data, we can do that, and it won't affect necessarily your payment with us or your cost with us. So what's your relationship with, with Amazon? How do you leverage you know, Amazon Web Services? Sure, we, we're built entirely on the Amazon cloud. Uh, when we started the service in 2010, we realized very quickly that Amazon essentially turns the data center into an API. And we want to essentially hire developers who can write to that API. We don't want to hire data center experts. And so we run on top of EC2, we run essentially in S3 because we store all our customer logs as well as our own production logs uh, in S3 and we use DynamoDB for all our metadata storage. Okay, so, so Dynamo is your, Dynamo is your, your key value store and uh, allows you to, to scale and it's yep, a service. Exactly. Okay, yep. good. And, and, uh, so talk about this event. Right? What do you guys got going at this event? Uh, maybe some of the customers that you've talked to, what they're, what they're saying, what's the buzz like? Uh, the buzz has been great. I mean, we were at the New York event as well, and, so, and at the first uh, reInvent yep. event um, and back, in, back in November. What we found at these events, it's both a great learning experience for our team from our engineer perspective, um, for some of the technical sessions, and it's a great place to do business with both existing customers who are here as well as prospects who we've been able to meet. So can you, can you, we talked earlier about this sort of machine data, it's underutilized, it's growing fast. Can you quantify that? Do yeah. you have any? Yeah, there's more data that's going to be generated, more machine data generated in 10 seconds in 2013 than was generated the entire year a decade ago in 2003. So there's more data uh, being generated across every part of your infrastructure. And the big challenge really is how do you create insight out of that and what do you do with it? And most companies, it's talking with a, a large Midwestern uh, consumer goods company, and they said, we have a farm of 3,000 web servers and we have no idea what data is being generated from them. And we have customers buying product from off that, uh, off that web server farm. And they said, can you help us? And we said, yes, I think we can. So, so, so who do you sell to? Who's kind of like your perfect profile of, of, of buyer that you're, you're interacting with? So our target audience typically is the IT audience. Uh, we sell to the DevOps community, we sell to VPs of application management, we sell to VPs of operation. Ultimately, uh, they report typically up into the CIO. Uh, and this is not just a technical purchase decision, it's a business purchase decision because a lot of the insights that are being generated by those machine data affect you know what you know how customers are buying what customer service is being impacted potentially by outages in your infrastructure how you're dealing with partners and so a lot of the machine data actually impact day-to-day -day business decisions which is why oftentimes we start with IT and the decisions made with IT but it's with the business use case in mind. Can you talk about that business use case that that economic model you know the I was curious, what's, what's, the, what's usually the first, the first business use case to get them to start paying uh, attention to the logs? Yeah, a lot of times it's supporting an SLA that's in place. So okay. if a company has a 3.9 or a 4.9 SLA, and you need to support that because that actually means dollars out of your pocket if you're right. not there, then companies use Sumo Logic to meet their SLAs to understand where they may be where their applications may be running more slowly than expected, where they may have downtime in the infrastructure that they need to solve. There's a great example of a customer uh, that was in our conference room one day, and we were showing them the power of log reduce, the ability to create patterns from this data. And they had five or six um, of their IT staff there, and we were showing them these patterns. 
and all of a sudden the conversation stopped. They started talking amongst themselves, and three people just left the conference room and said, um, excuse me, we now know what's wrong, we need to go solve it. And it was an SLA issue. We needed to figure out what, what was going on with the data. And was that hypothesis based when you started playing with the data, or no, it's well, still, it, it just it, surfaced? It, it just surfaces it. We don't necessarily know what the hypothesis is. We just know what the patterns are. Right. But that's why the combination of humans plus machine learning is, is very, very powerful. You as a human know what those patterns actually mean. And so you can then delve into those patterns to figure out root cause analysis and then figure out what's actually going on. Yeah, interesting. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about you're starting a business in 2010 mm -hmm. that's super data intensive yep. and, and the fact that you decided to use AWS as your infrastructure. Yeah, for us it was absolutely a no-brainer. We knew right off the bat we didn't want to build our own data center. We knew that we wanted to get to market quickly. Uh, and with all those considerations in mind, we said it absolutely makes sense for us to, uh, to build this in the cloud. And at the time, it made absolute sense to look at AWS and say, hey, do they provide us with the necessary infrastructure to make that happen? And the more we examined it, it just became a no-brainer. Said. It's in the cloud, it's going to be a service. Uh, AWS provides us with everything. Well, it's econo we I mean, the economics have to make sense first and foremost, right? Yeah, You're absolutely. building a business on it. Yeah, and the economics, the economics made sense both when we started off and as we've grown over the past three years considerably at scale, they make even more sense. Wow. And that's been, uh, from a TCO perspective, it makes sense for our customers as well because they've been able to offload the costs of managing servers and storage for all the log and machine data and people to handle all that. And so when we go into prospects and show them the TCO argument of a cloud-based service versus an on-premise-based environment, it's a very easy decision for them to make. Wow. Sanjay, talk about how you differentiate from the competition. There's a lot of you know, a lot of buzz now in the marketplace. You got, sure. obviously, you got, you know, Splunk did an IPO, you got guys like HP and IBM saying, oh, we can do that too. You guys, 2010, so you're bringing a, a 2010 on perspective. How are you different than the other players out there? Yeah, I think it boils down to a couple of things. One is in the whole analytics sphere, uh, the whole notion of being able to create and patterns from this, from the amount of machine data that you have. And, and those patterns and the insight you generate from those patterns are a lot of times a wow factor when they go into clients' accounts because they've never seen those patterns before. The second really is the elastic scalability of our service and, and certainly sitting on top of Amazon helps us. But the ability to immediately support a customer that needs to burst 5x, 10x the amount of data uh, that they did potentially even the prior day and then to scale up and down is something that's a huge value add to our customers so that they know that they can handle customer surges whenever they might occur. So you're all in on cloud. Anil Bushri is on the board, obviously. Yes, he, is. he knows a little bit about cloud Workday, co-CEO of Workday is the hottest IPO out there. And uh, excellent, we have a great story. Uh, really appreciate you sharing it with us and uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Good luck and we'll probably see it reinvent. Absolutely, thanks a lot All right, for having Sanjay. me. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. All right, everybody, keep it right there. Thank Jeff you. Frick and I will be back to wrap up uh, the day from AWS Summit. We're here at Moscone, this is theCUBE. We're live, we're here all day, wall to wall, coverage. Uh, we've got our colleagues down in uh, Stanford, John Furrier's down there. Check out uh, SiliconANGLE2 for that channel. We'll be right back with our next guest and our wrap up right after this.